So this is the bow I'm ordering, other than mine is gonna be a Rain 7. This is a Rain 6. Same Optifade pattern, same everything. So when it comes in, I gotta have my accessories picked out. Some of my accessories are transferable, like my tight spot quiver. I can use that on my backup bow, which my current bow is gonna be my backup bow, or I can put it on my new bow. But some things aren't that transferable, like rests and sights, so I'm gonna go over here and show you what uh, rests and sights I, I put on my bows. Going with the ripcord rest, I've, uh, I don't know how many of these I've went through in my life. Uh, I shouldn't say went through, how many of them I've had. Uh, the fall away rest, ripcord made right here in Montana. Uh, as good as it gets, Bill, he's installed thousands of these, so he knows the drill. And then uh, I use the black gold ascent sights. Uh, for me, I, I don't want lots of pins. I go with a four pin sight. Uh, this one here, let's see, we got five on this one. I'll probably grab one there that has four. How many of these do you suppose you've put together, Bill? <laughs> this year? <laughs> <laughs> well, okay, this, this year and your life. Between um, you and Gabe. Well, we have been doing this 14 years just as this business. Right. And we go through about 500 bows a year. Really? Wow. So. That's a lot of bows, though. One of the big things that a lot of people don't look at right away when they're setting one of these up is what's gonna cause noise. Right. Having this off that shelf just a little bit. Just enough takes most of the noise out of these things. So you're squaring that just to make sure. Yep. I mean, it, it also, everything's gotta be center and square here, or you're, mm -hmm. it's like building your house on a crooked foundation. Right. If you start crooked, then you gotta work everything to that crooked. If you start yep. straight, it's just way quicker, way faster. Yep. And all I'm doing here is I'm making sure it's going through the burger hole area, checking the distance between that and making sure it's staying square. Uh, Again, when you do it more than once a year, <laughs> way easier. You make this stuff look easy because you've done a couple. You know, even just tying the, the knots for right. loop. That would be the, the number I'd like to know sometime is how many of these I've tied. Yeah. So then you got your knots. So I always try to get everything here before it goes into the press. Yep. Um, check everything. We know they ship these on a 29 inch draw. Yep. They shoot it or set it in the comfort setting from the factory. That's what I want. But it is production, so you always have to check just to be right. just to be safe. So you cable. split, you open the cable. Yep. And run it through there. Run huh. it right through, and then we'll set the length and everything. Okay. While we're here, we're gonna put your peep height. I know you shoot about six inches, five and seven eighths generally. You know, you kind of get into the habit of knowing where things start. I mean, I like to watch what you're doing just so if something, if I were to break something out in the field, I'd at least have a little bit of an idea of what I did. But I'd be calling you, hey, Bill. <laughs> <laughs> That's why if you're far enough away, you really probably should have a uh, backup bow. Yeah, and I do. I always bring my my old bow. Mm -hmm. Whenever it's been in press, I always look to make sure strings and cables stayed on. When you relieve pressure, if these aren't right, sometimes they'll jump a track. Yep. 
Which is never a good thing. No. I always leave just a little bit when I pull it through and recut it. Because again, now we're going to put that big lighter deal to work. Just a little cleaner, nicer. Yeah, as my dad would say, well, my grandpa would have said, slicker than deer guts on a doorknob. <laughs> So, the last accessory that we would put on there would be my tight spot quiver, but my black gold sight already has the adapter where that fits, just in case anyone's wondering right. what I would do with my quiver. And so this, we're gonna adjust just a little bit. Yeah, just to give the clearance. Yep. <clears throat> what makes these so nice is the ability to adjust and balance your bow. Right. Only unconditional lifetime warranty on anything in the industry. So you want me to go shoot it? I want you to go shoot it. All right, it. let me grab my rest there, or my uh, release. Really smooth and quiet, aren't they? Holy smokes. That's like, like butter. All right, I'm liking that. The first shots are always great because everybody's like, wow, it didn't move, it didn't do anything, it holds. No jump, huh? Nothing at all. I mean, none of this, no. Accessory sales will go down because you really don't need a stabilizer <laughs> or anything. <laughs> You're gonna work yourself out of a profit margin, Bill. Huh. So now that we've shot it just a couple times, mm -hmm. uh, just wanted a few shots through it. Now we're gonna go make sure that it's shooting perfect for you and then we'll do the final sight in on it and get it ready to Great. roll for going. Okay, I'll go grab these arrows. We're gonna paper tune it? Yes, we are. All right, there, you've seen the accessories. We got the ripcord dress, we got the black gold sight, tight spot quiver. Now Bill's gonna have me paper tune it, or shoot it through paper, and you're gonna see how my form is terrible because of the shoulder and wrist and just because of not being good like Bill is. Uh, but his job, which he's very good at, is he's gonna use the flexibility and the adaptability of this bow to tune my imperfections out of it. Did I say that right? Exactly. Wow.